Hey what's up guys? Today I'll show you a psychological horror film, it comes. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. A little girl mutters to herself, he is coming, as she walks into the forest with a little boy, Hideki, behind her. She turns to Hideki and tells him that IT is calling her, because she is a bad child. Then she opens her palm and reveals a dead butterfly. She tells the Hideki that IT pulled her heart and took her somewhere when she was sleeping, and left bruises all over her body when she woke up. She tells him that if IT calls him he cannot escape. She flashes a creepy smile as the little boy steps back from her. The little girl curses the boy, and tells him that IT will come to him because he is a liar. After many years, Hideki grows into a young adult, then visits his family with his girlfriend, Kana. As they are eating dinner, the children are playing around, so the elders try to scare them and say the Bogiwan will take them. According to an elder, the Bogiwan is a demon that takes bad kids to the mountains. Then Hideki's mom shows Kana her son's childhood pictures and stumbles upon a little girl in the photo album. Hideki's mother asks him the little girl's name in the photo. Hideki says to his mom that he forgot the little girl's name. So the family becomes curious about that girl, and they mention a rumor that she got killed by her parents. The following moment, Hideki hears a voice that calls the name Suri, as he falls asleep. He dreams of himself as a kid, and hears loud banging on their door, caterpillars fall to the floor for every bang as IT keeps on calling Suri, who is revealed to be the little girl's name. The young Hideki says that no one is inside the house, so that entity starts calling his name, and hits the door loud. Then Hideki wakes up. The scene fast forwards to when Hideki and Kana are now married, and they are expecting a child. Hideki is trying his best to be a perfect father. One day, his colleague tells him that there is a visitor for him, who apparently wants to talk to him regarding Chisa. He is confused, since he and his wife did not tell anybody else that they'll name their child Chisa. He goes down with his colleague to meet the visitor, but she isn't there at the lobby anymore. The two get playful, and Hideki lightly hits his colleague, but to his surprise, the colleague is bleeding. Later, Kana gives birth to their baby Chisa. But when Hideki returns to work, his colleague's already confined in a hospital. Things start to feel weird as his colleague insults Hideki while in bed, until his body twists up in pain. The colleague says it feels like something was moving inside him. Hideki thinks that it is the symptoms, but the pale and tired colleague faces Hideki and laughs in a demonic tone. Soon he dies mysteriously. After two years, Chisa is now a toddler, and Kana seems to be unwell. Hideki falls asleep after blogging about his daughter, and he dreams about the time where IT is banging on their door once again. But in the dream, IT calls Hideki's name, and then calls Chisa. Luckily he wakes up, and realizes his daughter is standing behind him. Then his daughter tells him he is here, so Hideki embraces his scared daughter. Right after that, Hideki meets up with his folklorist friend, named Suda, and asks about monsters, especially if he knows what to do when he encounters the bogey one. They talk about the colleague's case where his wound that time looked like a bite, and he also had strange scars on his back. He remembers Chisa crying, and Kana locking herself up in the bedroom while covering her ears. Suda says there aren't monsters, but he would encounter monster-like creatures, who are in just human form. Hideki shows him a plastic bag full of torn amulets. He remembers the time he returned to his stormed house, and found his wife and daughter crying together in fear. Right then, he picks up a call inside from the living room, but he hears the voices once again, calling his and Chisa's names. Desperate to get rid of the monster, Hideki asks help from a freelance writer, and his girlfriend with an orange dyed hair, nicknamed Orange Hair. She grabs Hideki's forearm and casts a spell. She says that the monster comes from far away and often appears. All of a sudden, Hideki storms out, because Orange Hair tells him to be nice to his wife and child, in order for the monster to not come again. Hideki returns to his house, and he sees Suda and Orange Hair getting along with his wife and daughter. Orange Hair apologizes to him for what happened earlier. Hideki glances back at the see-through glass door of his apartment, and suddenly blurts out that it has been a while since he saw Kana and Chisa smiled. Suda and Orange Hair stay there until morning, and keep playing with Chisa. After a while, Orange Hair calls Suda, and tells him that IT is right there. Hideki and Suda run back to the apartment, as IT rips amulets. Orange Hair tries to shove IT away, then receives a call from her more powerful sister, Long Messy Hair, and hands it to Hideki. Long Messy Hair tells him that there's a vicious creature close to him, and she apologizes for Orange Hair, since her ability is no match to that creature. IT is strong-willed, and would keep on attacking him and his family for unknown reasons. 
Hideki tells her that there's a plant filled with bugs on the balcony. Long Messy Hair says that he needs to burn it, because these are IT's helpers. Long Messy Hair refers them to a spiritist, to help them instead, because she couldn't come yet. Suga and Hideki meet the spiritists in a restaurant. She tells them that IT is coming once again, then Hideki's phone rings. The series of voices shock them, from Chisa to Kana, to the voice of his dead grandmother, in the colleagues. Then lastly, Hideki's own voice that speaks a vile. Hideki screams that he would never say those words. Everyone looks in horror as the spiritist bleeds. Her arms have been cut off, and it falls to the floor. The spiritist mutters weakly, telling Hideki to hurry back home because his family is in danger. Long Messy Hair instructs Hideki to not meet his family, or they will be in danger because IT is chasing him all along. She tells him to return to the apartment, then lock the windows, close the curtains, fill the bowls with water and line them up in the hallway. Moreover, he ties all sharp objects, and hides them deep in the drawer, breaks every mirror, and opens the door. The telephone rings all of a sudden, but Long Messy Hair instructs him not to answer it. He gets confused, as he hears Long Messy Hair's voice from that telephone, and now that fake Long Messy Hair is instructing him to do all the opposite from the instructions earlier. He hears a demonic laugh, and sees a little girl's legs facing him from the door. The IT in the little girl's form runs towards him, so he shuts the bedroom door, but IT tries to break the door. Hideki dies, since his lower torso has been cut off already. A year later, Kana returns to her old job. Everything upsets her easily as she struggles with life. Chisa rarely smiles after her father's death. Her arms are full of bruises, and she keeps on asking about her dad. In a flashback, we'll see Kana juggling to cook and taking care of Chisa, while Hideki is busy blogging. He turns to his wife, and tells her enthusiastically that parental anxiety or anger affects children's personality development. Kana says that in all honesty, she was happy when Hideki died. She says that when Chisa got injured, Hideki just stood still, and couldn't even touch their bleeding daughter. Kana lets out her frustration to her husband, for he doesn't seem worried. Unexpectedly, Hideki insults the worried Kana cockily, that she's arrogant and imperfect, and that what happened to Chisa is just a child problem. It's revealed that Kana is having an affair with Suda right before Hideki died. The writer visits Kana in the apartment, and tells her that Orange Hair blames herself for Hideki's death. Kana asks if Orange Hair sends something once again, but the writer only says that her family is under attack. The writer asks Kana if the amulet was torn twice in front of her eyes. He opens a paper bag filled with torn amulets, gathered by Hideki before. But Kana reveals that she's the one who cut it with scissors. It happened when Hideki and her were in a rough patch. She says all Hideki wants is for the three of them to laugh, smile and eat, then upload photos on his blog to pretend to be a good dad. The writer is stunned to hear all of the revelations, but tells Kana that Hideki still did his duty as a father, and fought hard to protect them. On the other hand, there seems to be something wrong with Chisa, who apparently threw shoes at another kid in the kindergarten. Kana buys her daughter a pair of shoes, but hallucinates about bugs filling her wallet and the whole store itself. After three days, Kana calls Orange Hair in to take care of Chisa, so she goes to Tsuda's place. Later on, the writer contacts Orange Hair and asks her why she's in Kana's apartment. The writer instructs her to go to the Buddhist altar of Hideki in the apartment, and check if there's a rune. The writer tells her to tear and burn it, because that is a charm from IT. The rune was made by Tsuda, the IT in human form. Back in the apartment, Orange Hair tears the rune and burns it. But suddenly, she hears a child's laugh, and then the apartment door opens, and Chisa is now missing. Orange Hair runs out to see if Chisa went out, but she suddenly hears Hideki's voice, she turns around to see Hideki now inside the apartment, and is looking everywhere for Chisa. So Orange Hair runs back inside and finds Chisa, who is asleep. When she wakes up, she says that Hideki was inviting her to come with him. Kana returns home two hours later. She chats with Orange Hair over alcohol, and Kana suddenly tells her that she can have Chisa. Orange Hair looks back at her in shock. But suddenly, the sleeping Chisa rises up, and speaks demonically using Hideki's words. Orange Hair rushes and embraces the hysterical Chisa, as the balcony window opens. Orange Hair tells Kana to take Chisa away from the place, then, she runs towards the balcony and closes it. Here comes a splatter of blood from where Orange Hair entered. Kana sees her daughter smile in satisfaction with her food, and that makes Kana apologize sincerely. The mother and daughter go to the bathroom, since Chisa has to pee. Chisa then asks where they are going now, but Kana says that she doesn't know, so she asks her instead. But Chisa speaks demonically again, 
saying that she wants to go to the mountains. Kana hugs her daughter tight in fear, as IT bangs on the cubicle door aggressively. Kana says in the voiceover that IT was trying to get Chisa. Kana falls on her face, dead, and Chisa is nowhere to be found. In the next scene, long messy hair shows up. She has pure black, long, but messy hair with full bangs, higher also in full black, and is wearing big sunglasses to make her hair less messy. The writer looks at the unconscious orange hair in the hospital bed, but long messy hair is also in the room all along. She exhales cigarette smoke to orange hair's abdomen, which makes her vitals revert back to normal. Orange hair's sister wonders where her sister's silver ring is, for it wouldn't go this bad if only she was wearing it. She removes her glasses, revealing a big scar right below her left eye. Orange hair regains consciousness, and wants to find Chisa until long messy hair stops her, and she tells her that she has to know that the bite mark IT has on her is an ordinary, and she will die. Orange hair worries for Chisa, but long messy hair says that she is in charge now, and puts a spell for her sister to fall in slumber again. Long messy hair said Chisa's spirit is wandering right now. Long messy hair says she hates children for they are attracted to death, like how they tend to just kill insects for fun. Likewise, the dead are attracted to life, and want to take it. Long Messy Hair tells the writer that Hideki's spirit is in his blog now, because it was updated three days ago. The writer goes to Suga's place, and asks him if he knew what happened to Kana. Suga only chuckled, and says that she's a poor fool, and that Hideki isn't his friend but his toy. Suga's only interest is stealing from Hideki. He tells the writer that he's just like him, who doesn't love or believe in anything. The writer hurriedly runs out of the place. Then a group of elderly women called by Long Messy Hair earlier, encounters IT and gets into an accident. Suga apparently died before the 24th of December. On the other hand, the apartment building where Hideki used to live, is now being evacuated for the exorcism, and the surrounding area is completely cordoned off. At 10 AM, the writer heads to that apartment. He steps back a little in shock, to see Hideki happily chatting with an old woman regarding Chisa. Then he cries, because he still wants to see his daughter, but the old woman sends him to the afterlife, also, the writer finally finishes cleaning the apartment. Long Messy Hair arrives, and begins the ritual as other ritual practitioners do the same outside the building until dusk. A while later, IT opens the door, and takes the writer away after he just got out of the bathroom. The writer opens his eyes to see Orange Hair, who is now alive. Orange Hair says that she has been with Chisa. To his surprise, Orange Hair tells him that they have to protect their child together, and slowly pulls his hand to her belly. IT causes the ground to tremble, and kill some practitioners. IT is revealed to be inside Orange Hair. Long Messy Hair knows it right away, and exorcises her sister. Long Messy Hair says she needs to send Chisa to another world, because her connection with IT is deep already. Orange Hair protests and the writer tries to interfere, so Long Messy Hair stabs him in the abdomen. She tells Orange Hair to let go of Chisa, but Orange Hair says the child's injury isn't caused by others but Chisa, who hurts herself since she thinks she is a bad kid. Things get troublesome for Orange Hair, since the two are trying to save Chisa. The writer says it is just a child who craves attention, the reason they play with monsters instead. The writer pulls out the knife from his abdomen, and points it to Long Messy Hair, who pukes blood with bugs. The whole place crumbles like there was an earthquake. Then, a demonic laugh can be heard again, and calls for Chisa. The writer doesn't want to let go of Chisa. Long Messy Hair doesn't have a choice, but to push them off the balcony. She tells Orange Hair to leave and stop interfering with her work. Blood fills the apartment as Long Messy Hair performs her exorcism. The writer wakes up to see Chisa, who's looking at him smiling and happy. He goes to a convenience store, then sits on the bench, where Orange Hair is with a sleeping Chisa in her arms. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.